United the unions here today to make sure that construction workers get more direct employment, less agency work and less umbrella companies. Everybody has to go self-employed or umbrella and work through an agency and there's hardly any companies employing direct. basically a tax scheme to allow a transient workforce within construction. Early 70s, desperate to get in. I was actually saying, uh, and I don't mind me saying, a little bit off and sign on, son. Do you know what I mean? As long as we're getting our agency going here. So now you can have a whole job will be agency, yeah, or a company. I was first aware of it and first did it around 1995. The way they recruited guys to work for agencies was the same way as they did for subbies. They dangled that carrot of an extra couple of quid an hour. You have got a legal entitlement to ask to work, pay as you earn for the agency. But how they discourage you from doing this is that they drop the rate markedly. So let's say in our region at the moment, the going rate is about £18 an hour for a skilled tradesman. They will expect you to work for about 13 In 2014, the laws around bogus self-employment were changed so that if you was employed through an agency, you had to say whether you were actually self-employed or employed. The way that agencies got around that was by making you sign up to work through an umbrella company. How the whole thing works is employer phones up and says, right, we need an extra half a dozen plumbers for argument's sake. The agency supplied the labour, invoice the contractor for labour supplied. When they get paid, they will take their fee. Then the balance of that money will then be paid to an umbrella company. They will then take out the income tax. Your own holiday stamp, your own pension contributions. The employee's national insurance contribution, they will also take out the employer's national insurance contribution which you're made to pay because through a loophole they've got you classed as self-employed even though the reality of it is they tell you when to arrive, when you can have your tea break, when you can go home, how many hours you're doing. Then they also charge you a fee to get your wages. Fairly recently I was working for a company. After deductions including their fees they were basically taking a third of my gross money. An average figure when your PAYE director for a company normally works out about 25%. So they're having an extra 8% of my wages. A lot of them are just set up by the agency themselves, so it's only another company on paper. You trace it back further, the agencies are probably owned by the major contractors, so they're coining it in. The chance of getting a job with a construction company now on the cards is next to impossible. The only way of getting any form of work or employment in the construction industry is through agencies. I was a steward at um, BAE, Portsmouth Docks. We kept saying, hang on, what, there's a big problem here. You've got to recruit people direct. You know what I mean, with the pension and everything. No, it was just agency to about 80% in the end. It's just a fantastic tool for an employer to be able to take on labour in a casual manner and in a minute it doesn't suit, they can drop you just as fast. We don't want you to be like that either. But you like, you like to move it across the road? Well, that's fine, but we ain't going to move. Can't, you can't trespass on our property, can you? We can, actually, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, it, well, you know this is a civil protest, yeah. and were you to start manhandling this, that would be a criminal act. So that's a bind, isn't it? It wouldn't it? be, no. As a trespasser on private premises, we can use whatever power we feel is necessary to move you. Oh, right. Try that. Well, that is the law. I noticed a complete difference working for an agency and working direct because I had all the benefits. I had um, 10 weeks sick, I had, I had um, five weeks holiday a year, I had a good rate of pay, I had, uh, my, my income was regular every week. I was with an agency who don't know you. One minute you can be working for an agency and then the next thing they, a day they come along on a Friday and say, we don't want you anymore. Agency workers got no rights, they will just finish you. Although you'll have the same qualification as those guys on that company, you're still branded as a second class worker. And if you upset the foreman on the first day, it's the door, you're gone, yeah? Say you've been on a job with an agency and, and uh, you didn't get on with somebody, that manager rings them up and says, I'm sorry, we're going to have to let this bloke go. He's because he's this, this and this, right? 
and then the agency won't employ you again. So you're on their list and then they pass that information around and then you get the managers, they pass the information around. There's a different form of blacklisting, but it's still blacklisting. A company can refuse work to somebody through a third party, so the company isn't liable, it's the employment agency. And because the employment agency have foregone all your employment rights by forcing you to become bogusly self-employed or for an umbrella company, you then don't have a comeback on the employment agency either. If you're not already in one, join the trade union. It's the best way to fight for the best terms and conditions. We're calling for construction workers to be directly employed. The changes I've noticed is the lack of apprentices, the dilution of the trades. There are less tradesmen about because there's a lack of apprenticeships. They'd employ anyone they can get to do that job that might have enough papers to get through and the lowest they can pay them. Your workforce isn't going to be as skilled. The learning isn't going to be there. They've got to revert back to the old ways of apprenticeships and apprenticeship training. I started in 1986. I did an indentured apprenticeship through the Joint Industry Board. Did day release the technical college, did the exams of the city and guilds as part of the apprenticeship. When I started out, I'd done my apprenticeship in Plymouth Dockyard. You know, there was, there was just apprenticeships around, but now, if I was leaving school now, I wanted an apprenticeship, it'd be so difficult to, to get one. We used to be renowned for tradesmen travelling all over the world when they come out of their apprenticeship. They could go anywhere in the world, not anymore so much. The best man on the job, he doesn't have to do anything, but as long as he's there 10 hours a day, that agency love him, mate. When we say apprenticeships, I mean trade apprenticeships, not apprenticeship. When they say that, oh yeah, we've got thousands of apprentices in this country, they're calling a shop worker an apprentice. They haven't got the apprentices they're saying they have within the trades, i.e. plumbers, electricians, chippies, and also they're diluting the trades. They're saying, right, we'll have one man just trained to do one part of the trade, right? And that's what his job's gonna be. Instead of him going to college, they're teaching him to put a, a light switch on the wall. And he'll go on a build site and all he'll do is put light switches on the wall. Do you see what I'm saying? And that's what he'll do, you know? And then they'll, they'll get another bloke and they'll call him an electrician. Now, would you want somebody who only knows how to put light switches on the wall sorting of, sort of out a short in your house? You wouldn't, would you? you got people in their late 20s may have, may have took a trade and gone out of their way to do that trade. They've not, never worked for a proper agreement. They've never seen it. They've never worked alongside proper tradesmen. The trouble with national agreements is the national agreements work with PAYE people but they don't work with self-employed people. And they want, and, and all these agencies want self-employed people. You can ask for a, to be employed under them agreements, but generally that will either mean you get laughed at by the agency or your form of employment at that time will be cut short. Deemed to be a troublemaker for asking. We want to see less tax offices being closed. There's lots of tax evasion going on with these dodgy subcontractors. HMRC should look into this. One way to change it is if a company employs all agency workers, then that company should be paying higher taxes, right, to compensate for the tax they don't collect off of the workers, right, which would force the company into taking people direct. What we're looking for is if we can get some kind of maybe site-specific agreement like we did at uh, Free Bridges. With NG Bailey, it was the first taste of direct employment that a lot of my members have ever had. There was a big project in Crawley at Freebridge train station where NG Bailey's were building new maintenance sheds for First Capital Connect. There's 37 electricians together on the project who were falling foul of these new tax changes. We decided that we needed to, to produce a leaflet. Six o'clock in the morning, I turned up on the gate with, with the leaflet and spoke to electricians as they entered the project. Had a brief discussion with everybody. They all went into the mess room discussed amongst themselves what they want to do, and they decided to cabin up. At that point, the project manager for Angie Bailey's asked me uh, to come on the project as the local Unite rep and discuss with the workforce. After a bit of discussion with the electricians on the project, they'd all decided, show of hands, that the only way to ensure full employment under the JRB terms and conditions was to walk off the job. Surprisingly enough, 
25 out of 37 were not actually Unite members at the time. After half an hour, everyone had signed up to Unite and was a fully fledged union member. Give it about three hours, NG Bailey's came down the road and had in that time managed to thrash out a deal with HR in head office that all of the electricians who were affected by these changes and they walked off the projects on that day were to be given full terms and conditions under the JRB rules and regulations. The only way to do it is to walk and you've got to get everyone that one day you say wrong we're all out today son yeah and we're thinking about it yeah we may come back tomorrow. <laughs> Until you do that they're not going to listen yeah.